have you thought about what you're teaching your kids about money? Parents always want to help their kids succeed, but unfortunately, many of them never have that talk about finances. Well, and probably because uh, maybe we don't even know what the answers are, right? We make it too complicated. Mm -hmm. We're overwhelmed by all this information. Financial instructor Michael Mazaran from the Retirement Education Foundation has money lessons for kids at any age, including those adult kids. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much for having me again. So important to talk about this financial literacy and, and a good topic now that the kids are home from school. Maybe there's a little a little coachable moment happening go. at the <laughs> breakfast table this morning. But it can start really early. It really too. can, and, and ideally it should, because the earlier we start, the, the sooner these lessons can sink in for the kids. And even if it's something as simple as having them fill up a piggy bank, where they can see, ideally they can see through it, so they can see the piggy bank fill up and up and up with the coins or dollar bills, and incentivize them, make it fun, and tell them, okay, once you save up enough money, we can crack open the piggy bank and go buy a toy or go buy ice cream, go buy whatever will make them excited excited about it to help them begin to form that savings muscle and teach them if you delay gratification, if you save, 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 you get rewarded down the road for it. And if delay you gratification. Yeah, and if you want something versus need something too, those things cost money. And that's really, you know, around that middle school age teaching them wants versus needs. Mm -hmm. A lot of middle schoolers think they need the cool new shoes or they need that that cool shirt. Those aren't needs, those are wants. And teaching people wants versus needs early on will help them realize, okay, I need the food, I need shelter, I need all these things, but those are needs, and the things that I want, great, once I've covered the needs, how do I get what I want now? Also, you say consider an allowance. It is important that kids have money. In order to respect money and learn how to handle money, they have to have some money to deal with. They have to have some money to deal with, absolutely, to get a sense of, okay, you know, practicing. I have five bucks in my pocket, and I'm walking past the corner store, and boy, I would love some candy, but I'm saving this for two weeks from now for a concert I'm going to or for a movie I want to go to. So having that money helps them practice it on a daily basis. And what about the idea, I mean, there's, there's so much, uh, money's so mental as well, like, what about, well, I don't want to talk to my kids about this because I don't want them to worry. There have been a lot of people who take that approach of, I don't want them to even think about this, I don't want them to have anxiety. Yeah. And really, if we don't talk to them about, about this, we're not teaching the good practices, that's gonna cause more anxiety for the kids down the road. A lot of parents, they just tell their kids, we can't afford that, we're not buying that, that's not worth it. If we're just negative, negative, negative all the time about money, mm -hmm. it teaches the kids bad psychological habits when they think about money as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And that should not be the case. Let's talk about a very simple approach. If you're talking to high school kids or even recent high school grad, maybe you got a high school grad who's got a little bit of money. Uh, what is the, the simple investment advice that you give? I mean, honestly, the simplest thing you can do is sit a high school age person down and say, look at this stock chart of the S&P 500 over the last 50 years. Right. If you invested 100 bucks 50 years ago and held it for, or even pick 30 years, held it for 30 years, you'd have this much saved now. And teach them the power of investing into the Roth IRA and saving all those taxes. And really, back to incentivizing the young younger children, it works mm -hmm. for high schoolers also, high schoolers or college age kids. Tell them if you put, you know, 100 bucks in your Roth IRA, I'll match it. I'll put 100 bucks in there for you also to really help them, incentivize them to start saving and learning how to save for retirement. And the Roth IRA, uh, you're not paying taxes when you take it out. Exactly. You're paying the taxes now when they're At in the a very, beginning. very low tax mm -hmm. bracket and it grows, 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 grows tax free. And for the older kids, adults. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you always talk about, which I think is, is great, is if you want to help your kids, great but don't do it at your detriment. Yeah, we've seen some parents who want to help the kids, and that's very admirable and generous, but sometimes parents can help the kids to their own detriment and put their own retirement savings behind schedule. It's like when you're on the airplane and they say, when the masks come, when the masks come, come down, mm. put your own mask on first, because if you can't help yourself, you can't help anybody else. Mm. So make sure you're not stretching yourself too thin to help the kids, because down the road, you might become dependent on them because you, did, you couldn't save enough for yourself. Mm. Mm. Great it's info. tough, yeah, it is. Um, man, when you're dealing with kids and they and you want to help them buy things, but you also want to teach them to work hard and mm -hmm. save, yep. and these are all good lessons that we can kind of chip away at. And it's another sure. reason why it's so important for people to have good habits themselves. Mm -hmm. The kids are going to see how their parents mm -hmm. act with money, how their parents save, and how diligent their parents are also. Yep. There you no go. Doubt.
Thank you, Michael. Of course. Uh, we'll post all this information on our website. It's fox2detroit.com. And on the website, you'll find a connection to Michael's website, which is filled with good resources for free. Mm-hmm. Won't Thanks, cost Michael. you a dime. Of course. Appreciate it.